Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. We're just over a week into the general election now that Donald Trump and Joe Biden are their party's presumptive nominees. And the president is now really campaigning. I mean, traveling to five states in the last 10 days, touting his record. Today, he was in Houston, Texas for a campaign reception where he spoke about the booming economy and told a joke that has been getting a lot of laughs on the trail. Quote, I know not everyone's feeling enthusiasm. The other day, a defeated looking man came up to me and said, Mr. President, I'm being crushed by debt. I'm completely wiped out. I had to say, I'm sorry, Donald. I can't help you. Of course, while the president has been slinging zingers, all eyes have been on his Republican opponent, who owes more than half a billion dollars in legal fines. And the clock is ticking on the largest of those. That's the $454 million judgment in New York, finding Trump liable for inflating his wealth to secure better terms on loans. The ex-president has just four days remaining to post a bond covering that massive amount. He needs to secure the bond by Monday, March 25th, in order to avoid paying the actual judgment while he appeals. In a filing earlier this week, Trump's lawyers claimed it was impossible to get that bond, that he'd been rejected by more than 30 companies. Well, the New York Attorney's, Attorney General's office disputed that, noting in a reply that Trump could break up the amount he owes into multiple smaller bonds, citing some precedent of other settlements that work that way. They also suggested that the problem is of Trump's own making, since he fraudulently inflated the value of his properties, which he now needs to use as collateral. Good point. Today, the judge overseeing the case ordered the Trump organization to inform its court-appointed financial monitor in advance of any attempts to secure the bond. The order enhancing the monitor's powers also requires the company to inform her of any financial disclosures requested or required, any information provided in response to such requests, any representations made by Trump organization in connection with securing such bonds, any personal guarantees made by any of the defendants, and any obligations of the Trump organization required by the surety. It certainly seems like a good idea, I gotta say, at a moment when Donald Trump is under so much pressure and so vulnerable and obviously desperate and might be the next president. Not to mention the fact that he's already been deemed too untrustworthy to do business in New York State. Now, Trump is still hoping to be basically bailed out by the appellate court. His lawyers are pushing for them to intervene, to come in and, and basically say he doesn't have to pay, claiming in a letter today that having to come up with the bond would cause Trump, quote, irreparable harm. I bet it would. But if he does not get the answer he wants from that appeals court, and that could be today or tomorrow, I guess tomorrow, if he cannot secure the bond by Monday, okay, the wheels are already in motion for the state of New York to start seizing Trump's assets. That's how this works. Bloomberg reports that New York Attorney General Letitia James has formally registered the $454 million judgment against Trump in Westchester County, north of New York City, where Trump owns two valuable properties. Quote, it will allow James to more easily secure liens should she decide to do so on the Trump National Golf Club Westchester and the mostly undeveloped 212-acre Seven Springs estate. Trump's golf club in Westchester is located in Briarcliff Manor, features a 7,300-yard golf course, a 101-foot waterfall, 75,000-square-foot clubhouse. The town has valued the property at $15.8 million, which is, you know, in the grand scheme of things, not a ton of money. Now, Trump's Seven Springs estate was a major focus of the attorney general's case, ironically or not, with Judge Arthur Ngoran ruling that Trump wildly inflated its value. In 2015, the property was appraised for $56.5 million. Trump claimed it was worth as much as $291 million. It's the lower valuation, I think, that will probably be counted towards the penalty. Of course, the judgment against Trump is also registered in Manhattan, where the verdict came down and where the ex-president owns Trump Tower, valued at $99 million, an office building at 40 Wall Street, valued at $200 million, a condominium building called Trump World Tower, valued at $19.8 million. The attorney general, we should note, is not even limited to New York. Some of Trump's most valuable properties are out of state, including Mar-a-Lago, the Trump National Doral Golf Resort in Miami, and the Trump National Golf Club in L.A. So Donald Trump's property portfolio is threatened. The Trump Organization, at least in New York, as a functioning, independent, ongoing concern, is kaput. It has a federal judge as a minder. On top of all that, here's the thing. The ex-president is hemorrhaging cash in all his legal fees. 
I want you to listen to, to, to this number, okay? We have new filings with the Federal Election Commission. They show that the Save America Political Action Committee, that is the kind of, I mean, for lack of a better word, slush fund. It's basically a bank account to pay his lawyers, right? They dropped $6.9 million in legal fees in February alone. That comes out to, listen to this, a whopping $238,000 per day. I mean, think about all the lawyers, all the cases, all the filings. $238,000, a quarter million dollars a day. That sounds about right. And we also know this is basically what Trump's presidential campaign is all about. Getting back in the White House where he'd be protected from legal peril that right now he's bleeding him dry.